We're live, guys. We're live. <laughs> so for those who are now catching up with us on Facebook, we've been going for the last 15 minutes. Well, a little bit longer than that, actually. Um, and so now we're going to bring you guys into the conversation. Malcolm, so, welcome back. You're from your Jamaica trip. How's everybody doing? Um, so we're going to talk about charm and building rapport. And um, I was just talking to Rory about the role of stillness in building rapport. So let's sort of set the, the stage. I, I think of charm less as an attribute and more as an action. So I think of it as the proactive building and manipulation of rapport. Do we think that's a reasonable definition? What do you guys think? Yeah, it's a we'll skill. Go first. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that it's, it's interesting the way the charm is regarded because it seems like people see it as a finite resource that is hoarded by a collection of people who are really, really good at it rather than something that everybody applies but doesn't really think about it that much. If you've ever gotten through a DMV line faster than you were supposed to, if you've ever talked your way out of a ticket, chances are you've applied charm, but they don't necessarily think of it as a as an approach, they just sort of think of it as like a circumstantial thing that happens. And I, I speculate that part of it is that subconsciously they realize that if they knew that they could do this whenever they decided to, they would be obligated to be more successful. Am I being unfair? No, it, yeah, no. Um, at the risk of being too meta, there are a whole bunch of things that we think of as tributes that are actually skills. Mm -hmm. um, and almost all the personality traits are skills they aren't something that you either have or don't mm -hmm. um, i i have faked anger far more often than i've ever exhibited real anger because um, mm. it's a useful skill to make people do what i need them to do in the moment same with with being uh polite <laughs> I, I use that because the opposite makes everything more friction being an asshole makes the world have more friction for me i've proved this to myself <laughs> <laughs> It's not a useful, it's not a useful tool most of the time. Um, and, and again, with charm, uh, uh, if you guys, you're all on, on Patreon, except for the Facebook guys, but on Patreon, the, the last article I wrote was about making myself do sales um, last weekend. I, I got it. I got a tutorial on it. Someone taught me. I decided I was in a place to experiment. I experimented with it. And one of the guys there, total social anxiety, but we had to talk about using it as a skill. Mm -hmm. and, and he still had the trouble making eye contact and, and you could see the fear on him, we, but he, he would approach and he actually made a sale. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And that, that he needed to be told it was a skill and I didn't like it either. It wasn't something I was good at or something I liked doing. It was something I was practicing now to ingrain it. And it goes with almost all the skills we've been talking about on the cohort. You need to practice it. Man, yeah. it's, it's also interesting because the excuse factor seems to play a pretty big role in stuff like self-protection because I don't want to have to charm people. I want to be so forceful and sig significant and dangerous that I don't have to create rapport in order to solve the problem but also because i think there's a, a collection of people including myself who have because we are ignoring the skill element of it tell ourselves a version of the story that abdicates our responsibility to develop the skill so oh i'm just kind of socially retarded it's narrative, right well, hold on yeah. how often can charm be used for the higher level win always yeah Right. Always. It's the highest level win in most regards. The most thorough defeating of an enemy is when you make the enemy do what you want them to do. So not only are they not no longer a net negative, they're an asset. That's, that's a super high level win. But it's a Eric, and it takes so Eric, much energy. Eric Kondo, Eric Kondo, the charm dripping off of the screen is blowing me away. <laughs> <laughs> Must be. It's all Rory. <laughs> it ain't me. <laughs> uh, it, you you mentioned narrative and this gets back to, i think you're the one malcolm that that years ago put into words um mm. and if it was someone else i'm sorry um 
that everyone in the self-defense point of view, scenario, whatever, everyone wants to go through the most horrible day in their life, be successful, but not have to change in any material way. I've said something like that, but I don't yeah. know if it was specifically me. They, they want to go through as who they are now, doing things they've never done before, and come out as who they are now. And that's not going to fucking happen. Mm. And, um, and so that's part of what you're talking about with the narrative keeping people I don't want to learn enough charm to go through this in a charming way because that's not who I am now. And I want to go through it the way I am now and have that work. Mm -hmm. There's no chance it's going to work. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then also, I don't want to charm in, in some, okay, so I'll speak for myself. There have been years where I knew I could charm my way out of or into a situation, but my anger wouldn't let me because mm -hmm. it felt like service. It felt like kowtowing. Instead well, of that, recognizing it as manipulation that just happens to sound good. As, as well, they're you, both manipulation. Yeah. But anyway, right? I'm so I'm so angry you have to get out of my way. That's some, yeah. just another form of manipulation. But yeah. anger is how your ego excuses itself. It's <laughs> commonly used now too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and that I, I think you're right, Rory. It because again, it's the anger, the anger is the expression of the ego's rebellion against whatever it is you're trying to do. It's I, I'm, I think I'm taking it one deeper than this. It's mm. like your ego wants, it's that same thing. I want to do this without changing. It's, mm. I, I, I haven't practiced um, being charming. I don't have the tools. I'm afraid if I try to be charming, I'm going to fail. If I'm angry, then that's my excuse not to even try the tool. Yeah. So I stay, so it's, it's that, that fear of being unsuccessful, or whatever it is with the new tool. Mm -hmm. um, and anger just becomes an excuse to stay to stay inside your comfort zone. And it's it connects directly to some of the folk who are instructors or business people who have schools and don't want to charm. I don't want to network. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to, you know, be good at making people like me because if I do, then, you know, that means when I'm one of those gross people who makes money, ew, mind you. I am joking about this because I'm absolutely one of those dudes and I'm, I'm in, I'm in rehab. Paul is getting, getting me to the point where like, really, because I went through the rehab myself. That's why you just described the first two, three years I was in business. But I think that, <laughs> I think it's, it's one of those tools that you could argue from a self-protection standpoint is not only the highest level win in the short term, but in the long term is the highest level win. Who are the people who have the most other humans willing to kill and die for them. Generally charming people. They're extremely protected. I mean, you could make an argument. I don't know if you think politicians are charming, but at least they use charm. And that's, there's in that case, that's all they have. Like, yeah. so, right? It's, um, that might, it's, not a, it's not substance. It's not previous experience. It's you have career politicians that live on charm on charm alone. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, there's a... Yeah. Um, religious uh you you get the uh the, the, the preachers with the hundred thousand dollar hundred thousand person church right mm -hmm. they, they, i mean they're selling and they're living on charm right that's what they're that's what they're marketing right it's it's also interesting because i wonder if part of the issue is the charm doesn't feel tough like it doesn't because it doesn't because it's it's a marketing problem in the sense it's misrepresented it's not a way that someone who's clever and savvy takes the highest level win in a situation that could go poorly it's the way in their minds again that someone that is weak gets around their weakness so th there's, there's certainly an icky connotation oh god sorry no go go th there's definitely an icky connotation right mm -hmm. um i had my staff read um uh the like switch a former fbi investigator uh it was a body language but it was more than he sells it as a body language book uh great book if everyone wants to read it um, it's way more than body language. It's a lot of uh, interpersonal interaction mm -hmm. um, and how you know, a smile unlocks all this endorphins in a person's brain, et cetera, et cetera. So I had my team read it. They're mostly teenagers. And one of the moms joked, she's, her mom is also a student. She joked, are you teaching my daughter how to manipulate other people? And I said, yes, because every time you talk to somebody else, you are manipulating somebody else. If you do it in a friendly fashion, is that not better? But there's this, hang up that it must be if it's manipulative it must be bad 
as opposed to trying to manipulate somebody for the better good, right? I would agree. And force force feels cleaner f- to some people, especially people who think they're weak, than finesse does. Finesse doesn't feel like a win, even if it's a super high level win. L- let's put a pin in that, because because <laughs> that's that's got a, a huge bullshit piece of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that you know, we talk in, we talk in Kong Kong about the monkey brain and your monkey brain thinks apologizing looks weak, mm-hmm. but we know from the outside, it looks like leadership. And so there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff within our brains that we think if we charm our way out of it, it somehow doesn't build the same respect, mm. bully our way through it. But realistically it, it does build, um, it does build respect. The winds mm. build respect. Um, the, so, and, and the reason with the bullshit thing is, is a lot of people talk as if they like using force and it's cleaner and better, but the ones that actually have the balls to use the force are a vanishing small percentage of those people. So they're the, the ones that are pro, you know, I'm going to get through this cause I'm so tough, um, are mostly imaginary. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's. It's a perception thing. I, I remember reading a story about somebody, um, and this was a story that was written by you know somebody's grandson, and they talked about their grandfather like you know shooting at some guy or whatever, and they talked so lovingly about it. And what they left out was all of the follow up and the fact that the grandfather hadn't been in control of himself when he did it. He was angry and got drunk, and it just it like you had the lionization, and then when you read between the lines, you're like, wait a minute. But I think that I think you're right that most of the people who want to pretend that they'd use force wouldn't actually. And even for the people who would use force, this is going to be rough for them to acknowledge. How often are they actually successful longer term? How often are they trading a smaller problem for a bigger one? How often do they go to jail? And die. Yeah. Shot in the face by the same guy that they just bullied. Anyway, Paul, you said there were comments. Uh, two Facebook comments. So Amy uh, uh, Stewart Cooper uh, said she had a guy at the restaurant last night who was too charming. So that's a whole other conversation to have. Right? Yeah, that's a yeah. Uh, that's the, uh, the I, I walk onto a car sales lot and get hit with a, a greasy boatload of charm. Um, and I'm Italian, so I can say greasy. Uh, it made me suspicious. And she'll she can tell us the story later in the Chiron chat coming up in a little bit. And then Ebony from Minnesota. Hi, Ebony. Hi, Ebony. Um, what up? I like this one. My dad was the epitome of charm. Uh, he used it on a man following us down the street yelling racial slurs. And the guy ended up on his knees apologizing just because of the way my dad turned around and looked at him in the eye and extended his hand to introduce himself. Mm. Soft, soft win, right? Is that, but it feels, it doesn't feel weak to like say a soft win or a high level win. We it know it's a high level win, but it feels soft. like. It's soft sounds soft sounds soft. People want to believe that they are very deeply unyielding and don't know the relationship between being hard and being brittle. And so they can't understand the degree to which that some of the most powerful things in nature are actually pretty pliable, but they've got some strength to them. And it's that's one of the reasons I hate the term soft skills because it makes it sound weak and irrelevant. And that is categorically false because I would argue it takes a lot of self-control to employ any of them because people are annoying as hell. I like the being hard and being brittle line. Yeah, Yeah. man. And most people aren't even actually hard or brittle. They just don't like admitting that they're just like everybody else. Ebony followed up with, I was amazed, but it also felt so mad. Not going to lie. It's a paradoxical feeling when I remember it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would wonder, Ebony, like now we, we certainly have a lot of, well, just punch the person in the face is the correct response we, we see on the various social media channels. Um, yeah. But it seems like this was the better win that might actually have an educational moment in it for the stupid party involved, uh, involved rather than, you know, going force on force might be the losing on many levels. I think it's just... It's hard to it's hard to win and feel emotionally gratified at the same time if the contest is at all significant. 
because most of the time actual wins cost. This, this is, this is a rabbit, a huge rabbit hole thing. Um, wins tend to cost, but success tends to be invisible. Um, just something, something to noodle over. But one of the other things within this is there's a huge maturity level with this. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of things that when you're 16 or 18 or 20, <laughs> you want them to end a certain way because you have this image in your head. And most people outgrow that, not everybody. Um, but this, yeah, most is a strong word, but anyway, go <laughs> I like your optimism, Rory. I'm not sure most is the right word, but well, it's and, and that's one of the things we do. It's, it's one of those things, and we've talked about this before categorically. You take a young kid that's never been in certain professions, um, then they'll have this whole idea of how things are done that's almost directly opposite of how they're actually done, and <laughs> almost directly opposite how they're respected. You will never hear professionals say, No, I need to do this alone. <laughs> you never fucking hear that. Um, and, and so that, and that's one of the maturity levels. Cause when we all started, we thought, yeah, one man army right here. Yeah. me. <laughs> and, it's, and it took older, wiser heads to grow us into that. Um, what you think right now is courage is what we call stupidity. Um, and you have to go into the fact that they admire people that take sensible precautions. They do not admire people that jump in with both feet. But if we set, we're going to uh, take this into the Zoom. We're yeah, we're, in, we're out of time. But it's something oh. to think about for people out there when you comment on this. Hmm. How many instructors say this, but never tell the stories about the times they talked it down? How many yeah, people make lip it's, it's service to thing. it, but you never hear about the times that they could have fought and they didn't? So uh, uh, we're going to switch over to, to the group because we got people in the waiting room. But so Facebook real quick, I just Eric Kondo put another thing up. Um, the difference between an overt deterrence, something likely on the physical spectrum versus covert deterrence. Um, and that's, that's really good. But we do have to switch over. Um, so Facebook, as always, or YouTube, if you're watching this later, thank you guys very much for joining us. We are switching over because we have people in our waiting room and we uh, owe them our owe them our allegiance. So we're going to switch over to them, guys. And uh Thanks for joining us. Later, y'all. Hey, guys.